Hello everyone, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to Study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and I welcome you all in the third lecture of India's Ancient Past by R.S. Sharma. And along with R.S. Sharma, I have also added some references, some depictions and the descriptions given in the Tamil Nadu uh, board textbook as well as in the new NCRT. So I hope that we are going to learn in a very cumulative way about the India's ancient history, particularly because the nature of questions which have been asked in the previous two to three years in UPSC examination, the nature of questions has been a little bit difficult, ambiguous or not so direct questions have been asked. So therefore, the focus that shall be more on the explanations and interlinking the different concepts and the events along with each other. So today we are going to learn about, about the stone age. Okay. But before that, all of you have to join the session and make it sure that as soon as you are joining it, do not forget to share this session with your friends and your colleagues as well, whosoever is preparing for UPSC examination and needs a complete revamp of the basics of subject of Indian history, culture, then this lecture is going to be very, very essential for each of such students. So good evening, Abhishek Kapoor. Very good evening, uh, Mantasha. Good evening, Avika. Good evening to all of you, those who have joined the session. And guys, uh, I hope that this session is uh, definitely going to add some value, some positive value in your preparation. In fact, if this session uh, you are going to attend from the beginning till the end, from the first lecture till the last lecture, I can assure you of one thing that your doubts in the history, particularly ancient history, they shall be diminishing to a very, very low level. Now, if I'm talking about the candidate who is preparing for the 2024 civil services examination, here is the golden opportunity for such candidates because the affordable education has been now realized by Study IQ, who is offering the P2I batch for the 2020 examination in which we are offering the batches in Hindi, English and the bilingual mode, where we are offering the very, very significant details of the courses as well as all the requirement, required current affairs and you know, test series, etc. Everything is there, including the very special mains residential program also. All of that at a cost of rupees 29,999. Just you have to use this code ASR Live. So the link is given in the description box. You can go to that link. You can enroll yourself by using this particular code ASR Live. Okay, now coming to the coming to the lecture topic. So <clears throat> before lecture, you can uh, also join my telegram group as well. Now here, now if I'm talking about, uh, okay, okay. If I'm talking about uh, the today's topic, that is the stone age. Abhishek, don't worry. We will be uh, doing that when you will be there in the lecture. So talking about the stone age, can somebody tell me the very, very essential thing? Why do we call it as the stone age? What is the reason of that? Why is it called as the Stone Age? Why is it called as the Stone Age? This is the first question, the very first question that anybody should have in his or her mind while going through the books of R.S. Sharma or any other old NCRT, right? Any other book of old history. So what do you think about it? What is the reason? So if I'm talking about the meaning of this Stone Age, see, in the human behavior, in the human behavior that is determined by certain factors, okay, determined by certain factors. All right, everyone. Now, if I'm talking about certain factors, do you remember the previous lecture where we had discussed, where we had discussed that in every time period, a few factors are there which determine the rate of change, which determine the extent of the changes and the evolution in the human life, in the human history. So what happened that when, when the early human beings, when the early human beings, they discovered or they invented, they invented the 
tools of right tools made up of the stone okay tools made of the stone so their life started changing their life started changing so the use of the stone was the most prominent feature of this time period about which we are going to learn this was probably the earliest time period when the human beings were they were discovering their existence they were exploring this world the atmospheric conditions in the and right in the atmosphere basically the gases were changing their concentration the earth was still cooling the temperature still losing the temperature to cool down and therefore therefore the stones became the foundation of the life of the early human beings and this is why this age is called as the stone age okay everyone very good evening aisha very good evening avika so if i am talking about the stone age do you remember one thing can you uh, can somebody tell me that uh, which is the name of the present age what is the name of the present age about which we are talking right now what is the present age we are currently living in the age of age of internet or the age of artificial intelligence okay or the age of information technology such type of things now when i am talking about uh, the evolution i had already mentioned i had already mentioned about the geological development of the earth which means that after the formation of the earth it was not the same always there were certain changes which were brought with the time and the surface of the earth it started showing the development and evolution of life eventually with eventually with the passage of time so if you observe this time scale beginning from the old time to the new time okay beginning from the old times to the new times the different time periods that can be divided into aeon era period and epoch okay remember the name how do you remember the name this is aeon era period and epoch okay so currently if we are talking about the aeon the first one that was the hadean then archean then uh, this proterozoic and then the phanerozoic do you need to remember these names it will be very good if you remember the names if you remember the names so that will be very good but more or less you need to understand the latest cenozoic era so currently we are currently we are in the in the phanerozoic aeon and cenozoic era and currently we are living under the quaternary period we are in the quaternary period so at least this should be the current the current phase of the human civilization the current phase of the geological time scale every student must know about because this is the part of your general studies general awareness any candidate who is preparing for upsc and who is not aware about the present geological time frame that is that is extremely embarrassing for the student they must be aware because this is expected from any serious person who is in this field okay so currently we are in the in the phanerozoic aeon cenozoic era and quaternary period and right now we are in the holocene epoch in which epoch holocene epoch now let me tell you one more thing when we are talking about the holocene epoch can you tell when did it start when did it start actually it started around it started around 11.8 thousand years ago which means around 11800 years ago okay and what is the significance of this time period why am i telling you these times because since the beginning of right since the beginning of holocene you can also call it as the since the end of the pleistocene okay since the end of the pleistocene the temperature of the earth surface that started rising slowly what happened the temperature of the earth surface that started rising slowly okay the temperature started rising slowly so this temperature which started to rise 
okay the temperature which started to rise this led to the this led to the development of the warm climate this led to the melting of the ice cap which was surrounding the maximum part of the earth and once the ice caps they started melting there was the rapid change in the pattern of vegetation in the pattern of life in the types of soil and at the same time these changes also affected the manner of living the way of living of the pre-existential species like homo sapien or like any other human beings did you did you get the point here are you able to make this connection everybody yes or no be quick to tell i hope that all of you are able to understand this point here now let me tell you one more thing <clears throat> that if you are able to connect this thing so here what would have happened there would have been the development of the human beings this is why when i am telling you about uh, like about the stone age so it is very very clear it is evidently very clear that the stone age that was actually that was actually developed right it was actually developed in a very prolonged manner very very prolonged manner in fact let me tell you that suppose if we are talking about the stone age so that is divided into primarily the three parts the first one that is early stone age early stone age then after that that will be the mid stone age followed by the new or later stone age so there are the terminologies for that they are basically paleolithic okay then mesolithic and the neolithic neolithic all right and when we are talking about the paleolithic age basically paleolithic age can be further divided into it can be further divided into three parts that is the lower paleolithic okay lower paleolithic mid paleolithic and upper paleolithic and upper paleolithic so the question arises in our mind the question that should be that should be coming in all of the minds of us that what is the criteria to divide this time period divide this stone age the first question that is the criteria of division okay criteria of division and the second thing that is that is when is the right or what is the feature what is the feature of each period of each period okay so if we are talking about the criteria and the feature and the time scale so we can categorize these time periods into three distinct time periods in fact if we are talking about the early stone age early stone age will be it will be somewhere near around right you can say 10 million years ago around 10 million years ago up to 10000 years ago okay so between 10 million 5 million any particular range can be given why because there are continuously the latest discoveries which are happening for example for example uh, you might have heard that recently right recently there was a discovery of the archaic human beings and you might have heard about the name of homo naledi right homo naledi is basically uh, in the news recently and it is said that it is said that that contrary to the popular belief that homo sapiens were the first species of the human beings who were the intelligent human beings contrary to this belief it is found in the excavations in the discoveries that homo naledi they have already they had already they had already formed the stone tools they had already uh, they had already constructed their houses and they were already living in the pit shaped houses so such type of latest information 
mixed with the mixed with the theoretical information that could be your next question in 2024 civil services prelims examination okay everyone now if we go further so approximately 10 million to or 5 million to 10000 that can be a range that can be a range rs sharma ascri right he ascribes the date 5 million years ago to 10000 years ago this time period is ascribed to the to the stone age right to the early stone age after that there is the mid stone age which lasts from 10000 years ago up to 8000 years ago okay after that there is the neolithic age or the later stone age that is ascribed approximately from 7000 years ago and that goes up to approximately 4000 4000 years ago all right everyone so this is basically the basic time period basic time scale division of the distinct stone ages distinct phases of the stone age got it everyone so whichever developments we are studying about the human beings about their culture about the way of their evolution everything that will be covered in these three different time frames these th three different time frames i hope all of you got the point here is it understood by everybody yes or no now if we are moving further if we are moving further so let us study about the african ancestors of the human beings so who were these african ancestors of the human beings basically it is believed that the earliest human beings they developed somewhere in the area of ethiopia or uh, nile river valley nearby ethiopia egypt somewhere in that area somewhere in that area there is no clear cut evidence there is no clear cut evidence because if we study the ncrt we obtain several examples we have several examples that uh, different subspecies of the human beings they evolved and they spreaded through the different world different parts of the world for example if we see that approximately right modern man homo sapiens sapien is but right traceable to approximately 1 lakh 15 thousand years ago in the southern africa in the late stone age called as the upper paleolithic which means the current current species of human beings to which we all belong all of us belong to the homo sapiens sapiens okay so homo sapiens sapiens where did they originate they originated somewhere in the southern africa nearby tanzania you can say in the time period called as upper paleolithic called as upper paleolithic okay this species uh, species of the human being they had comparatively larger forehead comparatively thinner bones and slightly elongated slender structure okay but obviously if we compare it to the other hominid species it has a large forehead but originally made diverse stone tools for the different functions but not clear whether he was right anatomically equipped to speak or not nobody knew nobody knew about the speech ability of the human beings remember we have not heard any animals or any apes to speak in a very synthesized manner in a very syncretic and streamlined manner they have no such ability to make their speech regulated right they can simply create a specific sound i hope this is uh, able to be understood by most of you okay so the animals they cannot create the different sounds but human beings as a human being we can speak differently we can speak distinct uh, we can make different sounds different noises just from the same vocal cords so when did the human beings learn to uh, right uh, uh, you can say speak or say something this is not clear this is not clear okay and if we talk about uh, the modern human beings so they basically adapted to the changing environment most suitably and therefore till today they are existing and at the same time we can say that it was possible that in the ancient times there might be the different human beings coexisting together as we will see in this particular image for example this is the 
human lineage right human lineage as we can see and this was probably the earliest traceable earliest traceable form of the hominid and this is called as the australopithecus right australopithecus afarensis okay australopithecus afarensis and this was probably the earliest traceable hominid as i tell, uh, told you this was something more like apes more like apes but it had the it had the slendered structure it had the properly divided digits it also had it also had the comparatively protruding brain protruding brain right if we talk about the brain capacity it was in the range of something like 400 to 600 cubic centimeter it was in that range it was in that range okay so that means this ape like human this was not intelligent enough not intelligent enough but neither it was uh, too modest to not invent or not evolve itself so the word and right word australopithecus indicates the southern ape southern ape okay this species was followed by homo habilis this is probably the first proper human species which is uh, said to be the earliest ancestor of earliest ancestor of the modern human basically homo habilis followed by homo erectus the homo erectus if we talk about right if we talk about homo erectus or homo habilis just have a look that homo habilis was basically called as the skillful man skillful man means what this human this human could construct a few tools this human could construct a few tools simple tools in fact made of the stone this could uh, at least kill a particular animal or at least break the fruits etc using the stone tools okay this existed around 1.5 to 2 million years ago like uh, 15 to 20 lakh years ago followed by right, followed by uh, homo erectus as you can see homo erectus if you talk about the meaning of homo erectus is upright man upright man who is standing in the straight posture and this existed somewhere near about uh, upper paleolithic okay upper paleolithic time period all right and upper paleolithic time period it was the same time when the fire was discovered by the human beings fire was discovered by the human beings so it is believed that the homo erectus had discovered fire and this the this incident that was around 18 lakh to 16 lakh years ago okay 18 lakh to 16 lakh years ago after that we found the presence of homo sapiens basically this is the subspecies of homo sapiens called as the homo sapiens neanderthalus homo sapiens neanderthalus okay so neanderthal is a place in germany where is it located it is a place in germany and we have obtained the fossil of homo uh, sapien neanderthalus from germany and that is why that is why it's called as homo sapien neanderthalus but after that we have found the homo sapien sapien homo sapien sapien which is called as the intelligent human as you can see this is exactly like the modern human being with the broad forehead and the volume of the skull is approximately approximately 1400 to 1500 cubic centimeter and if we talk about the posture the posture is upright posture with the complete division of the digits and elongated femur as well as elongated legs okay so basically these are the features which are present in this particular human being and if we talk about uh, the discovery if we talk about the discovery so here we can say the early men in india when were they discovered and where were they discovered right so early men in india there are very less fossils present in indian subcontinent but whichever fossils are present they are found in the shivalik area shivalik area is basically shivalik is the shivalik is the lesser himalayas or the outer himalayas okay so if we look at the presence of himalayas okay so basically this is the great himalayas lower himalayas and shivaliks so the 
आउटर मोस्ट हिमालय रेंजेस दे आर कॉल्ड शिवालिक्स एंड दिस इज वेयर दिस इज वेयर द अर्ली मेन स्पीशीज एंड देयर फॉसिल्स हैव बीन फाउंड इन इंडिया दे वेयर नेम्ड एज रामापिथिकस एंड शिवापिथिकस ओके दे वेर नेम्ड रामापिथिकस एंड शिवापिथिकस प्रोबेबली इफ वी टॉक अबाउट रामापिथिकस एंड शिवापिथिकस रामापिथिकस फॉसिल वॉज द फॉसिल वॉज प्रोबेबली अ फीमेल it was probably a female and these fossils have been recovered from the places like shivalik hills and potwar plateau in the region of pakistan modern day pakistan however in india the earliest trace of the human beings modern human beings that is obtained from a place called as a place called as hathnora in the valley of narmada and this was discovered in the year 1982 it was earlier regarded as this might be a homo erectus but the anatomical research proved that this was homo sapiens sapien or we can say archaic homo sapien that means the old species old subspecies of homo sapiens not just that there are few more places from where we have obtained the earliest presence of the human beings or at least the traces of their existence in the indian subcontinent for example there is a place called as bori bori that is in maharashtra in maharashtra and it is believed that probably right probably this place had the presence of human beings somewhat 14 lakh years ago 14 lakh years ago okay because if we try to find out the age try to find out the age of uh, human beings found in the narmada valley that is called hathnora it is ascribed approximately a date of 2.2 million right 2.2 million years ago because the similar skull similar to the narmada man the skull has been found in the greece and the carbon dating of that skull has clearly and evidentially proven that the skull was approximately 10 million years old and this is why after the examination as well as uh, uh, expert opinions this has been accepted that narmada man was probably 2.2 million years old okay so these are certain evidences of the oldest human beings present in india somewhere if we talking about uh, the modern human species which we belong to that is the homo sapiens sapien there are evidences that probably this subspecies of the human beings they came all away from uh, africa from right from the root of southern india and somehow they spreaded in the northern parts r s sharma clearly says that the spreading of human intelligent human beings in india that did not occur from the northern side but it occurred from the southern side towards the northern part the evidence of which is obtained in the places like kurnool in uh, andhra in the places like nilgiris of tamil nadu and similarly there is a place in sri lanka that is called as fahain right that is called as fahain and in fahain basically 34000 years old homo sapien homo sapien sapien or the intelligent human being fossil that has been recovered okay so i hope that all of you got the clear clear chronology or clear uh, clear timeline of the presence of early men in india okay everyone now let us understand about uh, the theoretical aspects about the you know factual details related to the stone age in india first of all let me show you this picture so how many of you can uh, explain the meaning of this picture everyone how many of you can explain the meaning of this picture anybody who can explain the meaning of this picture anyone try to explain the meaning of this picture what do you observe what do you observe in this picture at least you can see that a human being who looks like uh, probably a you know an, an ape is holding a stone tool there is a small kid sitting just beside him then this fellow is uh, eating some vegetables and holding the head of 
probably a stag okay a stag which was killed and this right these two people these two people where the female is holding a child and plucking some leaves then these people are they are probably repairing or uh, constructing their huts where the female is also contributing okay and the males are also there all right so if we talk about this particular picture what does it show there are a few answers like uh, stability the answers say that stability some of them are saying like a community okay community so apart from that stability and community what else can you see i can see here i can see here that they are living they are living in a society okay so they are living in a society or this is a type of social life social life at the same time they can also uh, they can also represent the division of work the division of work okay the division of work then they are helping each other to survive which is called as the coexistential right the coexistential life coexistential life okay so these are certain common features however some picture right some uh, details are very very clearly visible for example like they are living in the vicinity of vicinity of a huge rock vicinity of a huge rock they are also living somewhere near the cave somewhere near the water body water body somewhere where the dense forest is absent okay so how many other features first thing no dense forest no dense forest second thing nearby water bodies okay nearby water bodies okay nearby water body then presence of presence of animals okay presence of animals then cave shelters cave shelters are there okay cave shelters are there and also at the same time we can say we can say that this is that this is having a similar climate somewhat somewhat similar climate which might existence in the savanna region because the grasses are there small trees are there okay and stone rocks are there obviously then uh, small streams are there something very similar to the savanna region climate okay now purushottam is having a question that sir ye kis time ka period ka ho sakta hai so this could be right this could be an imaginary picture obviously but this could belong to the neolithic time period or most probably the junction between the junction between the mesolithic and the neolithic because that was the time when the human beings started living in such type of communities but again they were having the division of work they were having the you know shared responsibilities etc but still they were not wearing clothes still they were not having the knowledge of uh, you can say uh, transportation media or something like that okay so that is why it may belong to a time period related to the neolithic or the early neolithic right something like got it everyone now let us understand about the details of the stone age so i have already explained to you that the stone age can be classified into the early stone age that is paleolithic middle stone age that is the mesolithic late stone age that is the neolithic age after that if we try to uh, have this map okay this gives you an uh, overall idea about the geographical region about which we are going to study in our ancient history we are concerned about this land also because this entire land is basically entire land is basically that of india the geographical expression historical expression of india all right everyone now phases in the paleolithic age the phases in the paleolithic age so these right this particular paragraph is directly taken from uh, rs sharma the book from itself however we have already discussed the majority of informations given here 
द फर्स्ट फेज इज कॉल्ड अर्ली और द लोअर पैलोथिक एज सेकेंड इज कॉल्ड एज द मिडिल पैलोथिक एज थर्ड अपर कॉल्ड एज द अपर पैलोथिक एज ठीक है सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दिस वन सो वॉट हैपन दैट इन द फर्स्ट फेज इन द फर्स्ट फेज broadly between 6 lakh and 1 lakh 50000 bc the second that means the mid paleolithic 1 lakh 50000 to 35000 bc and the third one that is the upper paleolithic that is 35000 to 10000 bc so this is the division of paleolithic age you can have a simple look here itself okay now for example <coughs> if we just a second if we talk about the division of upper paleolithic mid paleolithic and lower paleolithic okay so lower paleolithic is uh, 6 lakh okay 6 lakh to 1.5 lakh 1.5 lakh okay after that the mid paleolithic is between 1.5 lakh to 35000 then this is 35000 to 10000 bc okay so this is the division of time period this is the division of time period got it everyone now when we knew about the division of time period so let us understand about let, let us understand about the uh, features of the different time periods here and if we are talking about the features for example here we can say that uh, lower paleolithic or the early stone age covers the greater part of the ice age why because ice age ended just uh, 11800 years ago which means the entire lower and the mid paleolithic age that was that was going through in the ice age so the rate of rate of human evolution must be very very low very very low got it everyone now if we talk about uh, the common tools and the weapons etc which was used which were used by the people of the paleolithic age so they used the hand axes cleavers and choppers axes found in india are more or less similar to those in the western asia europe and africa which means probably the similar type of technology existed throughout the region or you can also say that probably probably in the similar time period we use more or less similar type of resources like today even europe is using iron australia is using iron in fact all the countries are using iron if it comes to evolve towards a new metal or a new material almost all the countries are trying to evolve and move away from the iron similarly in those time periods as well most of the people they might be or in fact they were they were definitely using the stones to manufacture or to construct a similar type of tools as well okay little bit of differences might be there but this indicates the commonality the commonality in the human evolution over a long period of time got it now so basically the purpose of the axes that was chopping digging and skinning early stone age sites have been found in the valley of river son or sohan in punjab which is in pakistan several other sites have been found in kashmir and thar deserts and lower paleolithic tools have also been found in the belan valley of uttar pradesh as well as the desert area of didwana in rajasthan so didwana has actually didwana has uh, provided the evidence of not just the lower paleolithic but the mid paleolithic as well as the upper paleolithic so we can say we can say that didwana is a place from where all the three distinct phases of the stone age have been obtained or have been found now this can be this can be one question in your uh, examination statement based question okay and one of the statements might be that didwana has the evidences of the presence of all the three phases of early stone age absolutely correct statement 
got the point so this is how the question might be there then there is a place there is a place called as the charki navasa in maharashtra that has yielded as many as 2000 tools and also the other places are there in southern india from where they have tools have been found like nagarjuni konda in andhra pradesh and similarly there is a place in madhya pradesh called bhim betka near bhopal and the rock shelters in the rock shelters in the deccan they have given several examples several examples or several presence uh, evidences of the presence of human beings okay now if we talk about uh, the stone tools stone tools why are they important because the criteria to define the particular time period or the settlement of particular time period into the paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic age the criteria was only the type of stone tool which was being used for example you can see here for example the stone tools which we are seeing in this picture these stone tools they don't appear in a very proper shape they don't appear in a specific weaponized structure they look quite rough quite undressed but then how can we say that they are the tools they are not some uh, random stones because because of the presence right because of the presence of the impressions of the use on that stone apart from that the specific shape which was probably discovered in the earliest the similarity to the presence of the stone tools also most of these tools have been unearthed that means they are not found just lying over the surface of the earth it is mostly the excavation which provides us such type of tools that is why these are these are regarded as the proper tools okay so what are the features of the paleolithic tools paleolithic tools they appear undressed irregular unshaped properly and this is why they are comparable to some uh, you know some sort of uneven shaped potato uneven shaped potato you can compare that to the potato shape got it and if we look at the other details about the people of lower paleolithic so lower paleolithic people they were principally the food gatherers they took to the small game hunting and lived on the fish birds etc okay so as we all are aware that early or the earliest human beings were not very efficient hunters they were primarily the food gatherers so remember one thing in history there is a misconception that uh, human beings were they were earlier carnivorous and later on they turned to the herbivorous it is wrong the earliest human beings were herbivores because collecting the food gathering the food is much more easier than hunting one animal and collecting the meat of that animal this might have this might have taken place accidentally or this might have been a need of that time that the people started hunting along with the food gathering this is why this is why the earliest stone tools which have been obtained they are suitable to crack the shells of the seeds crack the shells of the seeds they are not suitable to kill the animals got it but once the human beings they started shaping the stones in the form of the eggs in the form of the eggs in the form of the cleavers okay in the form of the cleavers then they started using these eggs or the cleavers to kill the animal to unhide the animal and this is how they were using the tools right everyone because in the middle paleolithic age what happened they were largely based upon the flakes or the small pieces of the stone which was right which have been found in the different parts of india these regional variations so the principal tools comprised of the blades points borer scrapers all made up of the flakes remember one thing the paleolithic tools they were made of quartzite they were made of quartzite right quartzite this quartzite it was a very hard stone very tough as well however even the flakes of the quartzite were very sharp and very powerful very much strong okay 
So we can say that, we can say that if the early Paleolithic tool that was something like a potato, so the mid Paleolithic tools, they were now something like chips because they were basically flaky in the character, flaky in the features, okay. So you can see here that if this is an uneven shaped potato, so this potato is sliced now, this is sliced now and we are getting a thin, okay, a thin and flake shaped or flake like tool, flake like tool. Got it everyone? I hope this is making sense to everybody because earlier this was uh, uneven, irregular. Now it is in the proper shape, in the proper blade or flake shape. After that, what will happen? After that, this will be converting into pointed, into the pointed tools and weapons. Okay, something similar to the fries. So potato, then potato to potato to chips and chips to fries. Evolution of the shape of the tools made up of the stones. Okay, now the geographical horizon of the middle Paleolithic sites that coincides roughly with the lower Paleolithic because there was not much change. Artifacts of this age are found at several places on the river Narmada and Tungabhadra particularly, Belan Valley in Uttar Pradesh, then Vindhya foothills, all these areas, they, they contain the uh, places, they have the places of the early and the mid Paleolithic age. Talking about the upper Paleolithic age, so this age is the most dominant, right, most dominant among the Paleolithic sites in India. Why? Now, suppose there is a question asked in UPSC, question has two statements. First statement that India has relatively, relatively few numbers of or few numbers of number of sites belonging to belonging to old Paleolithic age, old Paleolithic age. Second statement, the end of end of Pleistocene, Pleistocene led to the spread of, spread of old Paleolithic, Paleolithic settlements. Or Paleolithic settlement sites. Okay, then you have to tell here the question is basically only two statements are there in this question. The question says that you have to select the correct choice. The choices are uh, suppose which of the statements are correct. Which of the statements are correct? Option A only one is correct. Option B only second is correct. Option C both are correct and option D, none is correct. So, you have to choose the correct option out of A, B, C, D. Tell me everybody. So, I hope that, I hope that you all might be able to understand this question very clearly. Question is having two statements. Statement one is saying that India has relatively few number of the sites belonging to the old Paleolithic age, also known as the lower Paleolithic age. Okay, and the second statement, the end of the Pleistocene led to the spread of the old Paleolithic settlement sites. Okay, so I am asking you that which of the following statements is correct? Option A says that only first statement is correct. Option B says that only second statement is correct. C says that both the statements are correct and D says that none of the statements are correct. The right answer here, let me tell you that only the first statement, only the first statement is correct. India has relatively, relatively lesser numbers of, lesser numbers of the old or lower Paleolithic sites. India has higher or more numbers of, 
more number of the upper paleolithic sites not lower upper paleolithic sites that is the later paleolithic sites not old paleolithic okay so if we talk about if we talk about the second statement second statement is not correct why so why so because the end of the pleistocene led to the spread of the old paleolithic settlement sites come on old paleolithic settlement sites were already finished how many years ago approximately 135000 uh, 1,50,000 years ago the age of old paleolithic that was almost over from that time period we started yes aisha we started seeing the mid paleolithic age after that approximately approximately the time period when the ice age was over that means the end of the pleistocene at that time period this was almost the end of end of the upper paleolithic time period and the beginning of the mesolithic time period almost that time almost that time okay everyone so i hope that you remember it i hope that you remember it okay because just a few pages ago we were learning about it okay so what was the time period 6 lakh to 1.5 lakh 1.5 lakh to 35000 35000 to 10000 bc this is the approximate time scale division of the paleolithic time period okay everyone so i hope that it is clear to everybody i hope to uh, it is clear to everybody so end of the pleistocene led to the spread of the old paleolithic no obviously no yes yes uh, definitely prithvi definitely the complete rs sharma will be uh, covered so guys i hope this question has made a little bit uh, clearer sense to all of you now let us uh, look at the map and understand the presence of the paleolithic sites in india okay everyone so here this indicates the lower paleolithic this indicates the mid paleolithic and uh, this indicates the upper paleolithic all right everyone and if this is the diagram then it indicates the presence of all the three phases of the paleolithic period so didwana is the one where all three all three phases are found at didwana at didwana okay then apart from didwana there is a place called as reni gunta there is a place called as reni gunta remember these names very very important for your examination reni gunta is the place where we have all three phases of paleolithic period okay now after that we talk about the lower and the middle paleolithic okay so here apart from uh, reni gunta you can have this place as well called as the nevasa this also has all the three distinct phases and bhim betka has also got the three different phases of right three different phases of the uh, stone age apart from that i don't think that there are many places which have got all the three phases of the stone age covered in the map rest of them this all areas you can see here in the lalitpur near lalitpur you will find the lower paleolithic near mahadev piparia in madhya pradesh you will find the lower paleolithic adamgarh lower paleolithic okay so all these places you can check on the map completely they are very clearly visible all right everyone so guys uh, i hope that we have successfully understood the details related to the paleolithic time period in tomorrow's lecture in tomorrow's lecture we will be covering up the mesolithic and neolithic revolution let me tell you that neolithic revolution that is going to be a very very crucial part in fact no other time period in the human history witnessed such rapid changes as it was done during neolithic time period that's why that is probably the most crucial part the most crucial part in our ancient histories earliest phases mantasha definitely third and fourth chapter are not concerned with this examination right so the chapters which we are covering here in the live lecture only that 
only those chapters are important for the examination. Got it? So guys, that is all from my side. And by the way, if you are preparing for the 2024 examination, then do not, do not delay it further to enroll for our morning batches, which are starting from 10th of July. You will be getting the batches in Hindi, English and bilingual mode. What you have to do, just click the link given in the chat box in the description box below. And you can use this code ASR live to reduce the cost of this course from 70,000 to 29,999 rupees. All right, everyone. So I hope that is all from my side. Thank you so much for attending it and make it sure that if you love this session, do not forget to hit the like button. You can also share this video, share this lecture for those students who are a little bit serious about their preparation and they want the detailed discussion about the history topics. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye and have a great day ahead. Jai Hind.